My name's Alec and Ronnie, kind of, I guess that that's obvious. I'm doing talk on session donation. If that's not what you're here to see, you can leave. I won't be offended. Everybody hates me already. <laughs> um, so we have a, a very short talk here, so I'm going to try and keep it quick. I've got time for questions and whatnot at the end. Uh, we'll figure it out as we go. Uh, so I'm Alec and Ronnie, like I said before. I'm part of Longhorn Lockpicking Club. Uh, working in the Lockpicking Village upstairs. Gave a talk earlier, uh, introduction to lockpicking. Great story behind that picture there. I'll get to it at the end if we have time. Uh, it's awesome. Uh, I go to the University of Texas at Austin studying computer science, and I work for the Information Security Office there. So I guess that's why people might think they want to listen to me. Um, quick talk. Not a lot of time. Everyone can hear me. Cool, right? Yeah. Badass. Um, question, yeah, blah, 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 blah. Uh, presenting an idea, pretty much. Uh, this is really just... Uh, it's a, it's a variation on a session ID attack, uh, and I know most of you, if not all of you, are familiar with session hijacking, but I feel like there's at least one or two out there who aren't. Uh, so quick overview, session hijacking is stealing a session ID. Session ID is used for authentication for various things like uh, web services. Session fixation and cross-site scripting are two of the really pertinent parts to uh, this session donation uh, attack. There are countermeasures for session hijacking, and there, uh, I guess there are theoretical countermeasures for session donation because session donation hasn't actually really been talked about before, as far as I know. Um, these are common countermeasures. Um, random session key, generating it as you go to a new page, encrypting gibberish and whatnot. Uh, limiting by IP address. Yeah, you guys can read, hopefully. If not, then you probably don't want to listen to me anyway or understand what I'm talking about. Uh, no one's really laughing either. God, you guys are a bunch of fucking douchebags. Giggle, smile, or something. Make me feel better about myself. I already have self-esteem issues. <laughs> um, so, session donation. Uh, now that there's a quick, dirty overview of session hijacking and session ID attacks. Uh, if there's any questions on any of that, we can get to it later. Um, it's exactly what it sounds like. Instead of hijacking someone's session ID, you're donating yours. Uh, you, I mean... A lot of it's very. A lot of the attack is very similar to session fixation, uh, which is used in session hijacking. I mean, if you fixate someone's session, then you can steal it because you know what it is. However, uh, with session donation, instead of fixating it to something just so you know what it is, and then you can steal their uh, steal uh, their IDs uh, after they authenticate, you're fixing uh, their session ID to your session ID after you've authenticated with that session ID. Um, and you would think since session fixation is used a lot with session hijacking, a lot of the countermeasures would be the same. Uh, however, because you're authenticating beforehand, and we'll get into this a little bit more later, uh, it's a lot more difficult to prevent and predict. Uh, it's kind of cool, actually. I think it is, at least. That's why I'm talking about it. People do, too, because they can't even listen to me. Um, so, yeah, easier to give your identity to someone than stealing it. Uh, common knowledge there and whatnot. Uh, yeah, so am I insane? Kind of. Why would I give my information away? I'm a DEF CON. I keep everything private. I'm paranoid. Uh, I know the feeling. I fall in the same category. Here's an example scenario, though. Uh, you guys can read, but I'm going to read it anyway and insult you. Um, <laughs> Joe logs into a service, deletes stored, you know, delete stored information. Stored information, for example, could be like he logs into... Uh, a web page at work or something where he stores his bank account information for his payroll. Uh, it's all stored there so that they can just do an EFT to pay him and whatnot. And then uh, after he deletes his stored information, it's all clear, uh, donates his session to a second party. We're going to call him Jim, Jim Bob. Someone have a better name. No, you guys are all dull. God. <laughs> Uh, so then Joe, you know, same, same with session hijacking. Somehow uh, Joe gets Jim to go to the, to the uh, web page that he wants to attack. In this example, it's an EFT uh, information storage page. And, you know, Joe goes there and sees, oh, man, you know, the page blank. I better put all my stuff. You know, Joe told me there was an error earlier and that the database deleted my information. So I'm going to go store it so I can get paid on my payday. Uh, it's saved, but it's saved after he's been... Uh, his uh, after Joe has donated his session ID to Jim, so he saves it and it's saved. You know, as far as any anything on involved in the service is concerned, it's saved as Joe. Uh, so then Joe can log in at any point in time he wants because you're allowed to log in as yourself. Just 
because if you couldn't, that'd be ridiculous. Uh, and then he goes in, and all of Jim's information is stored there, and he successfully executed a session donation-esque attack. Uh, since the information is stored there, he can log in, retrieve it, delete it after he's copied it down to a piece of paper or whatever and given it to the world or a hooker or something. Uh, there are issues with session donation, uh, things that you would expect people to catch, but then again, you would also expect people to not log in with, you know, at a fake web page, but they do it anyway and give away their information to anyone who asks. Uh, so PEPGAC uh, happens all the time. You can't really deal with it unless you tell people they suck and they can't use your service, <laughs> which would be fun, but unfortunately it doesn't work that way. Uh, so, I mean, user training, if you ever, you know, you train a user who's dumb to not give away their shit so it doesn't get stolen, uh, you're like, hey, don't log into a page that's not the right one. Uh, you know, you don't want to give it away. People will steal your username and password, try and authenticate as you, blah, blah, blah. So they're all, they're all looking for, you know, oh, man, I better not put my information on this page. However, if a session has been donated to them, they're not going to need to log in. It's already been authenticated as far as server's concerned. They don't need any more. There's nothing else for, for them to authenticate. Uh, so, and I mean, if you get a single login set up, a lot of universities, some corporations, you know, uh, for example, the University of Texas, they have an EID uh, login. Same login, you authenticate once, and you're authenticated for all the services across campus. Uh, with something like that, people aren't going to think, oh, I didn't have to log in, because they logged in earlier, so they know, you know, they're used to not having to log in. Uh, and then, you know, if you get someone who actually knows somewhat what they're doing, and they are like, you know, I'm going to check before I put in my bank account information, check the SSL cert. The SSL cert's going to be valid. There's no problem with the connection to the server. You know, he's authenticated, connected to the server. There might be a problem, but it's not involved with this attack. So, you know, they check and they're like, oh, it's cool, it's all okay. Uh, but it's really not, and that's where the issue comes in here. So in order to, uh, to take this attack uh, live, Portrait Awards, anywho, uh, you have to, attacker has to be able to get a session ID. That's potentially a very large pool. I mean, if you can log in or if you're allowed to use it, then you can get a session ID whenever you want. Um, so, you know, once you have that, then you just have to be able to give away your, your session identity. It's very hard to stop someone from giving that away. It's, uh, it's definitely doable. It's just, at the moment, not a lot of people think to check for something like that. Uh, Cross-site cooking, session fixation, man in the middle, there's all sorts of ways you can switch someone else's uh, session identity with yours. Uh, yeah, like I said earlier, this is dangerous, kind of, because countermeasures that are implemented right now won't work, effect won't work effectively. Uh, the victim still has a valid session ID, so it's you know there's no problem there. It's been authenticated, it's been checked, and everything. And you know you can implement a common countermeasure for session uh, session hijacking is to switch the ID as you go to a new page. Well, if you get a valid ID and send it to them, and then just wait for them to click on new pages and whatever, then they'll still have a valid ID the whole time going through, and they'll be authenticated. And then you wait until they're done, go and take whatever you want. So, I mean, it really comes down to, can you prevent someone from giving away what they need to have? And it's, it's hard to do. Uh, and if you can't do that, can you prevent them from authenticating as themselves after they've given away their identity? Once again, very hard to do. Uh, and I mean, like this says here, it's session hijacking techniques might make it a lot easier uh, to prevent a user who knows that they've, you know, they've been compromised, to go in and you know delete the information that they accidentally stored in the wrong place. Once the uh, once the attacker logs in, the old session ID would have been cleared out, and they, you know, the the uh, victim can no longer log in and switch it with the or you know delete the information they stored there. Man, you guys are really quiet. It's a big room. Uh, so, like I said, it's definitely possible to prevent. Uh, there's little things. Uh, it's just the fact is the attacker isn't attacking, you know, trying to get the session ID. They're attacking the fact that it exists, and that's what you use for authentication. And you can't really get around that because you need that there in order to authenticate people. If you don't have it, then you run into issues that you, you need it. Uh, you know, just simple things, prevent cross-site scripting. Most people here know that, but a lot of people don't think to do it. It's the biggest vulnerability in the web, as far as I know, last I don't remember where I read that, Wikipedia. Uh, 
Yeah, I know. It's a great source. You're not allowed to use it ever in college. It's just disappointing. So uh, the best way I came up with, uh, and I mean, this is all very uh, recent, and I haven't... Uh, ooh, ah, stop it. Uh, so, I mean, the best counter uh, measure I came up with was, you know, uh, at a very basic level, it's pretty much using the IP address of the sender or something of that nature uh, when you generate the session ID. That way, if someone gives away their session ID, unless they're giving away to the same computer or uh, whatever, you know, same whatever you're using to uh, in place of the IP address, it's no longer a valid session ID. Uh, so you take a hash of the IP address and use it as part of the session ID generation. And then for authentication, you don't just say, oh, is this a valid session ID? If yes, then whatever. You, you go through and you actually have to regenerate the session ID based on who's requesting information and then compare the two. It takes, a, it takes more time. It's not as fast. It's not as efficient. But security is always the least efficient way to do anything. Whoa. I thought there was another slide in there. Um, yeah, so that went a hell of a lot faster than I thought it would. I guess I'm kind of nervous because of that great story I have from the picture. So I'm going to go ahead and tell it because we have a lot of time. And if you guys have questions or anything or if you feel like yelling at me, I guess that's cool too. Uh, so in case you forgot what this picture looked like, it's a giant fail trophy. Um, I gave a speech earlier for introduction to lock picking, DC 101, and... Long story short, TSA lost all my demo equipment and everything. I had to rewrite it Wednesday at 11 when I got in. And this guy said I po gave possibly the worst talk at DEF CON ever. So I'm working on figuring out who it is. I think he's giving a safe cracking speech in the Lockpicking Village later. I'm going to have a lot of fun with that. So does anyone have any questions or want to harass me? Yeah. Yes. Once again, yeah, it's it's not a foolproof method. It's just it would stop a little bit, you know. There's no, I don't believe there's such thing as a. I'm sorry. Sorry about that. Uh, he said you had mentioned something about protection earlier. Uh, why can't you just spoof the IP and then you know that entire uh, use the hash of the IP and generation of a server uh, on the server's generation of the session ID? It becomes uh, you know irrelevant at that point. That's true. Um, like I said, that's like the best I could come up with. Uh, it's very hard to prevent someone from giving away their identity to someone else with the intention of stealing their information. Uh, so yes, that is a very valid way to just bypass that too. Anyone else? Uh, yeah. Yeah, no, that's uh, that was the the original idea I'd come up with. Uh, the problem I saw with that is, once again, people don't pay attention to things like that. A lot of web pages are also already have that. It's you know, it's small and up in the top right hand corner saying like, "Hello, I'm a douchebag. Welcome to our website." Uh, so, I mean, you could make it a lot bigger, make it the title, make it so when they hit the submit button or whatever, it says you are submitting this information as, but. People will get annoyed and be like, yeah, okay, whatever, and hit okay. I mean, people don't even check, you know, if they had an invalid SSL cert, they're generally just going to hit okay and be like, oh, well, I trust this site. That means it's, I don't know, it must be a computer problem. I hate computers. Anyone else? If you have a question and I don't see your hand, just yell at me. Well, awkward. I'm sorry about that. I I just you know. <laughs> it's hard to give a speech after you've heard you've given the worst speech at DEF CON ever. It's actually very hard. So yeah, thanks for listening to me. Uh, if you guys want to catch me at any point in time, I'll probably be up in the lock lockpicking village doing uh, things of that nature. Uh, if you don't really want to talk to me, you can go up there, and I might not be there for the other half the time. So, do you have a question?
I'm sorry? Uh, right now, so uh, I tried editing my website before I got here because I was going to put up all sorts of nifty stuff and I was tired and then I got halfway through it and realized I didn't have my bag from TSA and stopped. So my website is down. Uh, it will be up by the end of tomorrow. Uh, and I say that tentatively because who knows, I could, the way my life has been going, it's probably not going. So. <laughs> uh, it's obscenicize.com. Great, I'm going to have to put that up here. Give me two seconds. Yeah, I know, right? Because I rushed through my speech and didn't really go over things like I wanted to. And Yeah, uh, so like I said, go to Lockpicking Village, it's cool. I have time to kill, so I'm just going to keep talking and chatting until someone wants to yell at me or something. No one likes yelling at me to my face. It's kind of disappointing. I really kind of wish he had said I gave the worst speech at DEF CON ever to my face. I could have a lot of fun with that conversation. No, it's all secondhand, so I got I to gotta find out who it is still. It was actually uh, Thursday. So, <laughs> yesterday. Well, yeah, that was like half my speech. I had to kill three hours. I was like, I lost my shit. Um, I'm going to say another sentence. I'm going to say I lost my stuff again because I got a lot of time to kill. Once again, I mean, more time killing. Yeah. Fair enough. Well, I actually feel like this one went a lot worse, so <laughs> definitely, possi definitely possible that I topped my own worst DEF CON speech ever, all in the same con. Wish I had a third speech. I'd try and top myself a third time. I'd... You really? You want me to? I mean, I can go through it really quick. Cool, yeah. Oh, cool. Awesome. I feel like people, people want to listen to me. So, yeah, session donation. Ah, that's me. Turbo track. Not a lot of time. Two minutes to go. Session ID. You know what a session ID is? Cool. Kosher. Not going to go through that. Session donations. Exactly what it sounds like. Take the hijacking out and donate instead of taking. Um, why would you do that? Are you insane? Yeah. If you haven't listened to my speech yet, then you probably know. Oh, like, ah, I lost my train of thought. Schizophrenia's a bitch. Um, example scenario. Someone would, no, we don't need that. Um, yeah, so why would you give it out? Uh, because if you can get someone to authenticate as you at a website, then save their bank account information, then you know, you go in, log in as yourself, their bank account information is saved, and you yeah. can just take it. I'm sorry? Uh, there was actually a different uh, which Mahoosier PowerPoint on the CD. Uh, this will be on the website. I'm giving this to Nikita after the speech. Uh, so it'll be on the DEF CON website. It'll also be on... Uh, I think they they put the speeches, the uh, video recording of the speeches, so you get to listen to me being embarrassed and freaking out, <laughs> too. Yeah. It'll be cool. So if you ever feel bad about yourself, you can go ahead and watch this video and you'll feel great. That said, uh, I'm out of time, thank God. So go to Lockpicking Village. It's cool. Uh, thanks for listening to me be a douchebag. <laughs>